Welcome back to the Teradata Advantage for AWS How-To Series. In this session, we're going to talk about bar configuration. At the end of the last session, I recommended using the Teradata Ecosystem Cloud Formation Template to deploy the environment. The advantage of using the Ecosystem Cloud Formation Template is some of the configurations are automatically done for you. The template launches a stack with all the resources you need for a bar solution. Once the stack's finished deploying, there should be at least four EC2 instances running. These are the viewpoint, the Simic server, DSC server, and the Teradata Vantage node. I have five because I spun up a two node Teradata Vantage system. In this session, we'll be focusing on the viewpoint, DSC, and the Teradata node. Now, next step is to run some initialization scripts. What we need for it is, first of all, the bar environment up and running, which is checked. Uh, the four instances are all up. And then we also need the public IPs of the instances ways to connect to the EC2 Linux instances and the private key file. This will be used to log on to the EC2 Linux instance. So the scripts we need to run, first of all, is the DSU init on DSC server, and then the bar nc init on Teradata instance, and then there's also a properties file on viewpoint we need to check to make sure that the entries in it are correct then we'll restart viewpoint server. So once that's all done the servers are all initialized and ready to go. So now let's go and start doing some uh, initialization scripts. The first one will be the DSC server which this one here I'll log on to the server first. That'll be ssh-i, the private key file, ec2 user, at, and we'll need the public IP for the DSC server. Put it over here, return, and now we're locked down. After that, let's switch to root and then the command or the script we need to run is called dsu init and it's in this directory opt slash teradata client depends on what dsc server you installed i have 1620 so i put 1620 here this will be the version of the dsc server and then after that dsa command line dsu dash init dash v um, this is this will be the viewpoint ip private ip here so let's go back to the web page go to viewpoint find the private ip address copy that paste over here and here we go now that's all done, let's move on to Teradata server to configure the client handler. Same thing, here's my Teradata server here, let's log on first. And switch to the root. And then next we'll need to run the bark nc init script. And that's at opt. Teradata client again version number which is 1620 for me DSA bar NC init so this over here is the DSC server's private IP go back to where my DSC server is and the private IP is here copy that paste turn the first TPA node, which is the Teradata node itself. And come back to the Teradata node. 
find the private IP, and paste over here, and our goes. So now the Teradata node is finished. Let's move on to the viewpoint server. Let's go back to the viewpoint window. The same thing, we log on to the viewpoint first. Copy the public IP and paste over here. And here we go. Um, for viewpoint, there's a property file we need to check to make sure it has the right information in it. I'm just going to go all the way to the end of the property file. The property file is at etc, opt, teradata, dsa, config, and the file name is called bar portlet properties. To return, you can see here the broker.url, this IP address should be the dsc, server's private IP address. Let's go back and check to see if that's correct. So that's all good. Now we just need to restart viewpoint. Switch to root and then we'll just do a etc init hd viewpoint restart. I'm just going to pause the recording to wait for it to finish. Okay, so viewpoint is restarted. That took a couple of minutes. So we finished running all the initialization scripts. Next step is to go on to viewpoint itself and to configure the portlets. To set up viewpoint bar portlets, we'll need a web browser and the public private IPs for the EC2 instances and also the instance ID for the viewpoint server. This is used to log on to the viewpoint server. AWS F3 bucket needs to be created beforehand. I'm just going to quickly show the buckets I have here. So I've created a TD to F3 backup bucket and a folder underneath it says Teradata. This will be used to configure the backup solutions later on. We'll also need a valid access key ND and secret access key for the user who's going to do the backup job and ways to connect to EC2 Linux instance. To do this, the first step is to log on to the viewpoint server and then go to settings and configure the bar setup portlet. Once this is all done, we should be able to go ahead and schedule a backup job. Let's go back to the browser to open up a viewpoint. First of all, let's copy the public IP of viewpoint. Open up a new tab, put the IP there. Don't worry about the message, the warning message. Just go proceed. The username is admin and the password of viewpoint is the instance ID of viewpoint. Let's copy that to the password field. So now we're at viewpoint. Go to the settings, bar setup. There's nothing under DSC service yet. I'm going to add a new one. So click on the plus sign to add. Broker IP or host is the uh, broker IP address or host name of the machine that's running the ActiveMQ broker. In my case, it's my DSC server's IP, so I'm coming back here, copy the private IP of the DSC server, and paste it back in here, enable DSC server, now discover servers. So this drop-down list, if you have multiple servers, it will show up here, and you just pick the right one. I only have one server, so that will be my one there. The repository warning thresholds, this one is the maximum amount of data to store in your DSC repository. The security management, if you check this box, that means whenever a user submit certain comments from the command line interface, 
uh, the user must enter a valid target of viewpoint username and password there. And the logging uh, just gives, gives you different levels of details for your log. So I'm just going to keep everything as default and hit apply. Okay, so now the DS server, DSC server is added. Now, with the systems and nodes, because I'm doing a backup job from my Teradata system to S3, I need to add the Teradata system here. And to do that, I also need to make sure the Teradata system is already part of the monitor systems. Let's just go over there to check to see if it's already there. Let's go to the settings, monitor system. Because I use the CloudFormation script to launch the whole environment, so the uh, Teradata systems automatically entered here, and the name for it is MPP. So let's go back to bar setup, system and nodes. Let's add that MPP system here. So click on add Teradata system. It's MPP. SSL, if you want to enable, click on that. So I'm just going to leave it as default. And the stream limits. The first one is the maximum number of concurrent streams allowed per node. And the second one is the maximum number of concurrent streams allowed for each job on the node. Note that this number cannot exceed the number of amps on the node. So if you put a higher number than the number of amps, then it will get reduced to the number of amps on the node anyway. Again, I'm going to leave everything as default and click on apply. And this will be the username and password for your database. By default, username is DBC and password is whatever you put in when you launch your Teradata instance. I'm going to click on OK. And then we need to restart DS main on the system to register the new selector. So let's bring back my Unix for Teradata system. And to restart DS main, let's run this command CMS term 6. And then we'll do a start bar DS main dash s dash d and we'll put in the private IP of my DSC server. Okay, then we'll start bar DS main. Yep, we check the status bar DS main dash j. So it's started and that's done. Let's come out of here. Moving on to media servers. Media servers manage data during system backups and restores, and it's auto-populated. All we need to do is to verify the information is correct. So here's my DSC server and the IP address. Look right, and the default port is 15401, and that's right as well. And here's my Teradata system, and the IP address here is the private IP address of Teradata. So that's all correct. Now, fabrics. Beginning with DSA 1610, you can define network fabric. If a network fabric is defined, it applies a logical network mask when a job plan generates data path between AMPs and bar and C processes, acting as media servers. Prior to DSA 1610, network masks were used for the routing of traffic between nodes and media servers. If fabric is defined, job submission skips the logical net mask and selects the existing fabric. The fabric is used only for backup, restore, and analyze validate jobs. Network fabric is not supported for repository backup or restore. To make it simple for this demo, I'm not going to define a fabric, but I'll show you what you can do here. If you want to define fabric, click on the plus sign, put in a name of a numeric characters with dash or underscore. I'll just put Teradata back up here. The system name, you have the choice of doing the repository or MPP. I have MPP system set up there. 
and then the nodes here this is where you associate the media servers with the nodes I have two nodes I can select one of them the first one for example and then pick the media server associate with the nodes also the IP address associated with the media server you can also add my second node here and do the same thing and for each node you can also define multiple media servers and multiple IP address by using the plus sign and once you're done click on enable fabric and then apply now we go to backup solution we're going to do a backup from Teradata instance to AWS S3 so I'm going to click on this one here and add a new account. The account name is anything you want it to be. Uh, it needs to be alphanumeric and maximum of 32 characters. I'm just going to put Teradata here. And the account ID. This is your access key ID. If you don't know what that is, uh, go back to IAM and the information should be there listed under your account. If you lost the uh, your secret key, you need to create a new one. And the account key is your secret access key. So the region, my region is US underscore West underscore two. Note that it over here is underscore not dash. Bucket I have created a bucket before. And my S3 bucket is called TD2S3 backup. And I also have a directory created under that bucket. It's called Teradata. And I'll keep that as default to apply. Okay, so the uh, account's created. Let's create a new target group. Click on the plus sign here. The name can be anything you like it to be. It has to be alphanumeric characters, dashes, and underscores, but no spaces. So I'm just going to put TD back up here. Enable. And I'm using AWS S3. Account name is Teradata. That's just right. Regions US West 2. As a media server, I'm using the DSC server. Bucket is TD2S3 backup. Prefix is Teradata. And then apply. I'm only going to do a data backup, so I'm not going to worry about repository backup details and the alerts. So now the setup's done. We just finished configuring the bar portlet on viewpoint. Next, we're going to run a backup job. Thank you and see you at the next session.